Triple wave, bankruptcy, unemployment, and layoffs in China. Sanitation workers go on strike for unpaid wages. Garbage piles up on the streets. It's a year after the white paper movement. Witnesses reveal the inside story. The onslaught of the pandemic in China is akin to a tsunami, with many areas in the Yangtze River Delta industrial hub experiencing waves of closures and unemployment. Faced with these significant impacts, the tradition of returning to hometowns for the Lunar New Year has commenced four months earlier than usual. Recently, there have been a wave of closures or layoffs in companies in Shenzhen, China, and other places, leading to a surge in unemployment. Many migrant workers, unable to find new employment after losing their jobs, return to their hometowns early to celebrate the New Year. A mainland China blogger stated, It's only November, but Shenzhen has witnessed many people returning home. I heard that millions have left Shenzhen early. Some even cried bitterly when leaving, fearing they might not return this time. Online screenshots show that a company in Shenzhen issued notices in June and October this year about 10 months of shutdown due to insufficient orders and operational difficulties. On November 28th, this topic trended in mainland China's search list. Furthermore, factories in Zhujiang and Hubei have started their Lunar New Year holidays early due to reduced orders and excessive inventory. A knitting factory in Zhujiang informed its employees that they would be on a holiday from November 3rd to February 27th, 2024. A private steel mill in Hubei also notified its staff that they would be on holiday from November 1st to February 17th next year. Wang Hu, an expert on Chinese issues and the person in charge of the analysis section, commented that, As China's economic situation continues to deteriorate, the wave of people returning to their hometowns on the mainland may continue to expand. Wang Hu stated, The Yangtze River Delta and the Pearl River Delta are two leading economic regions in China. They are the first to sense changes in the international economic situation. I think this wave of returning to hometowns may rapidly spread nationwide and continue to expand. Earlier this year, initially, everyone imagined that China's economy would recover immediately after the zero-COVID lockdown was lifted. However, this recovery did not happen, leading to an unprecedented consensus at home and abroad that China's economy is genuinely facing difficulties. The wave of unemployment in China is also affecting white-collar office workers. Nearly 20 major internet technology companies recently reported downsizing and laying off employees. For example, ByteDance, the parent company of Douyin, announcing the closure of its gaming business, Haishi Guangyan, affecting thousands of employees and their jobs. China's financial crisis has left local authorities paralyzed in many areas. Sanitation workers in Wufangyan City in Dalian, Liaoning Province, are on strike and garbage piles up on the street. An online video shows garbage everywhere along the roadside in Wafangdian City. The trash cans were full and no one was emptying them. A rickshaw suspected to be used by sanitation workers was also left on the roadside and filled with garbage. People had piled garbage up around the garbage bins one pile after another. As reported by Apollo News, all sorts of waste was piled up at the end of the streets and lanes, seriously polluting the environment. Whenever the wind blows, the garbage flies everywhere, causing great inconvenience to the residents' lives. It is reported that no one cleaning up the garbage is related to wage arrears for sanitation workers. However, how long the wages have been in arrears is unknown. On November 29th, a reporter called the official phone number of the local city office, and it showed that the phone was out of service due to arrears. Wang Fangdian's publicity department responded that the Housing and Urban Rural Development Bureau was actively working on solving the garbage problem and wage arrears. However, the report said the response did not give netizens enough reassurance or solutions. In September, it was revealed that the public Dongshang Zoo in Wangfangdiang City had not paid wages for six months and had cut off animal food. Again, the city's Housing and Urban Renewal Bureau responded by saying it is coordinating to solve. In March this year, Xingyi City, Guizhou Province, also spread video of garbage all over the streets. The local street office responded that there was no money to pay the sanitation workers. The sanitation workers had allegedly not been paid for eight months and went on strike. It was only after public attention that the local authorities took action and the sanitation workers went back to work. In June last year, sanitation workers in Hoha, Inner Mongolia, also sought help from the media, claiming that they had not been paid for nearly three months. One year ago, tens of thousands of people in over 20 major cities across 21 provinces of China, including Shanghai and Beijing, took to the streets to protest the Chinese Communist Party's CCP zero COVID policy. Many condemned the dictatorial rule of the CCP, with some even chanting slogans like Down with the CCP and We Want Human Rights. The movement was triggered by an apartment fire in Wu Mushi, Xinjiang, where the CCP exploited the pandemic to impose a prolonged blockade on the people. 
the fire on November 24th, 2022, in a high-rise apartment building in Wumushi, Xinjiang, is estimated to have resulted in over 40 deaths, including many children. Due to government blockades of doors and stairwells, those trapped in the fire could not escape. Outrage over these unjust deaths sparked a large-scale white paper movement against the government's blockade, with even Chinese individuals worldwide participating. At that time, the white paper movement spread, with students from all over 200 colleges and universities in China responding. However, it was suppressed by the CCP, leading to the secret detention of many young individuals who remain missing to this day. After widespread protests, Beijing unexpectedly lifted the epidemic-related blockade on December 7th. The sudden relaxation caught people in medical facilities unprepared, resulting in a surge of hospitalizations and deaths from COVID-19. Youth involved in the white paper movement continued to face oppression and flee China. According to RFA, a year after the white paper movement in China, many young protesters are still missing or imprisoned. Chiao Bai, a young man who participated in the movement, was fortunate enough to reach Canada to seek asylum. He revealed that after the white paper movement at the end of November last year, he was occasionally harassed by state security surveillance agencies and sent to detention camps multiple times. Unable to endure the physical and mental torture, Chiao Bai had to leave his hometown and find another way to continue fighting for democracy and the freedom of the Chinese people. Chiao Bei, who prefers not to reveal his full name for security reasons, said earlier on November 27th that when Shanghai was under epidemic control last year, he climbed over the wall to watch news on the internet. He and many others took to the streets. Chiao Bei witnessed protesters holding blank papers being arrested and put into police cars. He filmed the video and was arrested by the police. Chiao Bei said that throughout the night, he was treated inhumanely at the police station in Shanghai. He said, they grabbed my arms behind my back and slammed my head against the cement wall, causing bruises on my head. I protested, so I was forced to sit on the tiger chair. My wrists and ankles were immobilized, and I sat there for over an hour without being able to move. He mentioned that more than 30 people suffered the same fate that night. This spring, after participating in a discussion on Twitter, Chiao Bai's home was ransacked, and he was sent to a detention center for several months. Due to protesting injustice, Chiao Bai was arrested and tortured many times. In October this year, he still faced difficulties with customs when boarding a flight to Shanghai. When he arrived in Canada, he thought he was still dreaming. Chiao Bai said that looking at what happened to former Prime Minister Li Kuxiang, people can imagine that the Chinese people can only live like walking zombies. He said, this is definitely some kind of political assassination. If a former prime minister is treated like this, let alone ordinary people, treated like ants and trampled to death at any time. It takes a lot of courage to participate in protest activities in China facing such great risks. So we overseas people need to support and stand in solidarity with them. Reports say that Zhang Junji, a participant in the white paper movement and a former student of the Central University of Finance and Economics, fled China and now lives in exile in New Zealand. Zhang revealed that he was sent to a mental hospital and tortured by the police twice for participating in the white paper movement and the fireworks movement. He said, I left China mainly to escape the CCP's persecution. However, after arriving in New Zealand, he was still threatened by Chinese police. In December last year, Wu Yanan, an associate professor at Nankai University, was asked to delete online comments related to supporting student participation in the white paper movement. Subsequently, the assistant professor was forced into a mental hospital. Human rights activists expresses gratitude to those participating in the white paper movement. According to VOA, one year after the white paper movement, many people across China are still in prison or have their freedom restricted and are banned from leaving the country to participate in this movement. Hu Jia, a human rights activist based in Beijing, subjected to long-term surveillance by the CCP, who restricted his freedom, commented on the impact and significance of the white paper movement for individuals and Chinese society in general. Hu Jia believes that under the pressure of economic recession, the slightest freedom he now feels when returning to everyday life is thanks to young people who bravely stood on the streets of China. Over a year, these young men went through many rounds of investigation, warnings, or imprisonment. However, this information is often strictly confidential and not disclosed to the public. Hu Jia said that anyone in China who wants to commemorate the first year of the white paper movement will undoubtedly be attacked, and before that, the authorities will certainly take various public and secret measures.